Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is Where Are They Now, where I take a look at the last five years of my uh, board gaming hobby, the various games I've played across those five years, and uh, talk about how they're doing. Which ones are still here, which ones aren't, why, why not, and as usual, this is a smattering of games, these are not all the games I've played in the last five years, but I'm taking a look at the last five years of March specifically. This is Where Are They Now for March as of 2023. So, we're going to go ahead and start off with 2019, which is insane when you think about it. 2019 is five years ago. It's 2019, 2020. 2021, 2022, and 2023. That's five years of marches, not even including today. 2019 does not feel like five years ago, but that is how that is how time works. It keeps moving on, and we keep getting older, and I miss Pogs and Crazy Bones. They were fun things. Super Soakers? Remember Super Soakers were like a thing? Does anyone do water guns anymore? Am I just old and out of touch? I don't, I don't, I don't know anymore what, what life is or isn't. Anyways, let's go ahead and have a conversation. Start off with 2019. Starting off with Le Phantom the Opera over here from Hurricane Games, who, are they even a publisher? Like, things change so fast these days. I don't, I don't, I'm having a crisis of, like, old age, middle, I'm, I'm having a midlife crisis right now. Anyways, Hurricane, uh, Le Phantom de Opera, this is a game that's in the Mr. Jack line of games. I like the Mr. Jack line of games until I played Le Phantom de Opera, at which point I got rid of the other Mr. Jack games because I thought this was the best version of it. This is basically a two-player game that's going to have you uh, chasing each other as far as why am I getting into what the games are? I usually don't do that as much in this video. Anyway, it's a deduction game in which players are trying to uh, figure out where players are through a process elimination. It's more about deduction than actual... It's more about elimination and logic than actual, like, I figured out who it is. You can know who the bad guy is, so to speak, and it doesn't help you unless you can prove it. So it's about proof over finding things out, per se. But I really like this one. It's held up just fine over the past several years. I continuously, every once in a while, I look at it and think, should I get rid of it? Because I don't play it all that often anymore. I probably pull it up a few times a year, but even so, a few times a year is not bad, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it's a very solid two-player game. It has held its own for, through a variety of other deduction games because of the very unique nature of how it operates, and in my opinion, it's the best of the Mr. Jack line. We have Grand Austria Hotel, which is a game that I really enjoyed when I played it. I thought it was very well done, but I also thought I'd rather play Castle Burgundy or Coimbra or other Euro games in the genre. At one point, I got it back to try to play with the expansion, and then over time, I realized I just wasn't pulling it off the shelf relative to other games. So Grand Austria Hotel, very good game, a very popular game. People like it a lot. For me, I found that I something about it didn't land as hard as other Euro games for me. Chronicles of Crime is a game that I've enjoyed playing and do not love. I find that Chronicles of Crime feels like a lot of guesswork in the game. I find I can get stuck on it, like just like just scan, 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 scan. It's an app-driven game where you're interrogating people and talking to them. So you go to a location, then you talk to the person, and you ask them about the the flashlight you saw, and you're you're doing all this stuff. There's a little bit of a VR type, not really VR. You could do VR, but basically you're just looking around your phone, moving around to like look around the scene. Lots of fun things happening in it. I actually prefer the kids version, the uh, the kids chronicle system, which is the same core system, but it's actually dumbed down a little bit so you can't get stuck in dumb loops, which I guess, I shouldn't say I prefer it. For myself, I wouldn't play it, but I enjoy the kids chronicle system for kids versus Chronicles of Crime. It's a very popular system, but for me, I found that too often I would get stuck in a loop that I didn't appreciate or enjoy. The Spireball Island, which is a game that I still have. I, I still have it. I don't actually like it. I, I don't have fun with it at all, but my kids love it. Uh, for me, I find it's very much roll and move with chaos and... Some things that have a degree of cinematic presence, you're rolling volcanoes down the island and having flicking like the various like fireballs or different things like that happening in the game. So it has a cinematic table presence that is fun. For me, it's still roll and move at the core of it and it therefore feels very, very luck driven even while you're collecting these things and escaping back to the helicopter. The production on it is both great and terrible at the same time. It's, I think it's the Restoration Games' first game and now they've gotten better and better with Thunder Road and Return to Dark Tower and all that. But I still have Fireball Island because my kids still like playing that one. And then we have Mage Knight, played that for the first time in 2019, finally, and uh, Mage Knight's fantastic. I still always question whether it'll be here. Every single year I question, is it going to be here next year? Is it going to be here next year? For now, it's still here because it gives me an incredible experience whenever I play it, but then I don't play it enough, and I'm like, why am I still here? And it gives me an incredible experience every time I play it. So it is a very, I'm very torn on Mage Knight as a system. I, I think it's a fantastic, and maybe one day I'll be confident, either confident enough to get rid of it or confident enough to keep it. Right now, it's still in this weird middle zone because it is both it's so much to take on as far as the mental load to learn to play to prep it, even playing it solo could be like a three hour long experience i don't always have time for a three hour long solo experience so it's a hard game to table in any variation of it but when i do i'm like dear lord i can't get rid of it i just can't i can't i have to play it more that's my reaction every time i play it in 2020, we had Tiny Epic Defenders. I enjoyed Tiny Epic Defenders. I kept it for a while. I had it for maybe a few years. I had the expansion for it. It's a little tower defense game, and it's a fun little puzzle. Uh, ultimately, most Tiny Epic games have not lasted for me, and Tiny Epic Defenders
Defenders did sadly go away over time. We have Taverns of Teepenthal, which is a very fun game in some aspects. From the designers, from the, I don't know if the same designers, but from the same publisher as Quacks of Kuddenberg. I think North Star Games put it out, if I'm not mistaken. Do they still own Quacks? I don't know if they still own Quacks. Anyways, um, uh, Quacks of Kuddenberg, Taverns of Teepenthal. Taverns of Teepenthal is a weird situation where it's a... Just a drop less Yuri than I like. I had it for several years, but I did eventually move on from it. We have El Grande, which is holding strong. This bad boy is not going anywhere anytime soon. And in fact, if you want it, Hans and Gluck and Lucky Duck, depends on where you are, have actually put out a new version. I prefer the art of the old version personally. I prefer the aesthetic of it. But uh, this old version is hard to track down and expensive, and you do. So if you want a cheaper access point, you do have that through Hans and Gluck and Lucky Duck. But it's a great game. It holds up. You can play it online, on Yukata, on, 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 on Board Game Arena, or in person. And it's one of the best area control games, in my opinion, to date. Continuously amazing as far as experiences go. I think everyone should play El Grande. I should play El Grande more. I should play El Grande more. El Grande is fantastic. It's just a fantastic game. I highly recommend El Grande. Uh, then we have, in, uh, we have Atlantis Rising. I played Atlantis Rising in 2020 for the first time. I did a comparison video of Atlantis Rising versus... Pandemic, if I'm not mistaken, and it's one that I struggled with a bit for a while. I, I had it for a while. I eventually got the expansion to it as well. Played that. I I like Atlantis Rising. I enjoy it. There are aspects of it that hold it back for me, and so it's one that I've had for several years. But eventually, it has gone away. Uh, the expansion was definitely a good thing for it, but still, I think for me, there are other cooperative experiences that I enjoy more. Particularly, the loop is like my go-to these days, and it's been my go-to for like the past year plus. I think the loop's fantastic. It is so so much fun. Anyways, 2021, 2021 brought us a few games. We have Spicy. Spicy was a little um, bluffing-ish game. I really enjoyed Spicy. It's a fast-paced game that, at the time, my group had been shifting from Skull to Cockroach Poker as our filler game of choice, and uh, Spicy temporarily made the rounds. Didn't last, unfortunately, but it is... Um it's a great game. It's a great game. I, I, I do think it's a solid game. I held on to it for maybe anywhere from six months to a year. It was a good game that ultimately I think my group preferred Cockroach Poker overall. We have Winter Kingdom, which was a great game that replaced Kingdom Builder until later Kingdom Builder then replaced Winter Kingdom. Uh, Winter Kingdom is very good. I think it's a better game than Kingdom Builder. I think it gamifies Kingdom Builder a bit more, gives you more choices, more agency. I think it's a very, very solid game. I also think it's harder to teach and less likely to hit the table. And that's a weird spot because I, I literally got rid of my entire Kingdom Builder collection because of Winter Winter Kingdom, and then after like two years, I just I was like, you know what, we're not playing Winter Kingdom as much, and I got Kingdom Builder back, which we've already continued to play. So I think it's a better game. I I a hundred percent think Winter Kingdom is a better game. I think it does more stuff. It's more interesting. It's a better game, but a better game that doesn't hit the table is a worse game. In fact, fun fact, uh, you know, little little knowledge pieces for you. That should go in a cup. I should put that in a cup. A better game that you don't play is a worse game. That's a good cup. I like it. I think I'm clever today. There goes my midlife crisis. Anyways, uh, yeah, Winter Kingdom. So, uh, Winter Kingdom. I think it's a, I think it's a better game, and I, I played it less. Uh, we have Tiny Turbo Cars. Tiny Turbo Cars is solid. I still have it for right now because I still play with my kids. I think it's one that there are a bunch of these uh, shooting, shooting slash racing games. They all have fun aspects to them. There was um, Deathwood All Stars. There's Tiny Turbo Cars. There's rest, the rest, they have Thunder Road Vendetta, which I haven't played, but I want to. But ultimately, Tiny Turbo Cars is a good game. I think if not for my kids, I probably would leave. It is fun. I just find I don't resonate towards pulling those types of games off the table. I'm happy to play them, but I don't like. I don't. I don't find myself drawn to playing them, if that makes sense. I'm just, I'm just happy to play them. But anyways, that, uh, that's uh, Tiny Turbo Cars. Then we have... Where was the next one? Cubitos. Cubitos over here. Cubitos is uh, 2021 again. This is a hard one for me. I love Cubitos when it came out. It actually replaced Quacks of Quedlinburg for me. I mean, I still have Quacks of Quedlinburg, but I love Cubitos. I think it's fantastic, and I don't play it all that often. I still refuse to get rid of it, though, because... This is one of the things I don't play. I mean, Quacks I play more often, but only because my daughter likes it, so she has to play it a lot. But uh, Kibitos, is, Kibitos is a very solid one that I really enjoy. I wish I played it more. They have an expansion coming out. I'm excited for that. But it's a good racing game. I think it's very, very well done. It gives you that push luck element. I mean, Rolling Heights replaced both of them for me. Rolling Heights is even better. But ultimately, yeah, I think Kibitos is a very fun game. I really enjoy this one and still have it right now. Still refuse to get rid of it. In 2022, we had Tamashi. Tamashi, I played that for the first time. I still got that one over there. But that's I haven't played it since getting it, unfortunately. So it's a bit of a, 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 a cop-out in that sense. But Tamashi was a fun game to play through when I played through the prototype. And I am excited to dive into the final game version, the final game of it. We have Stella Dixit Universe. I held on to that one for a year and a half maybe two years. Uh, Stella Dixit Universe is a, another game in the in the universe of Dixit, and again, it falls into a similar Winter Kingdom kind of problem. I think it did some things that were really well done that uh, gamified Dixit a bit more in a way that was good, but also Dixit is just simpler to table and has 95% of the game. So 95% of what you get out of it, you still get from Dixit, and you do so with 
zero rules. Like, the Stella has a whole rules process of how you have to play it, and Dix is like, here, here's some cards, and just match the wards, and we got this. You can teach Dix it in two seconds, you need to actually teach Stella. And so that makes Stella, again, a better game that got played less, so it did eventually leave. We're seeing a trend over here. Although, Although, next up, we have Brass Birmingham. Brass Birmingham, which is slightly more complicated than Brass Lancashire, and I think Brass Birmingham is better. Then again, the rules complexity between those two, once you're playing Brass Lancashire, the extra bit to play Brass Birmingham, I think is worth it, and I think it's a better game experience. Uh, for me, I've been playing uh, Age of Industry for, like, I, I don't remember how far back Age of Industry goes, before I started logging plays. I played Age of Industry way back in the day. I eventually replaced it with Brass, uh, Brass Lancashire, and then eventually, once I played Brass Birmingham, I got rid of Brass Lancashire, and Brass Birmingham is still here. It is fantastic. It does not get as often as I'd like, but that's okay. That's a game I could table once a year and think it was totally worth it. We also have So Clover, which has continuously been going up in the ranks for me. So Clover is a fantastic party game. And one of the, what it's so much fun. I love it. I, I just it just grew like for me it joined the ranks of like the crypto and, and code names, but like if you ask me right now whether I'd rather play So Clover or Code Names, I don't know which one I'd pick. I think Decrypto is lower. I actually I'm curious how I rated them in my top 100, but I think Decrypto is my least favorite from those three. Just one is my least favorite, then Decrypto. Then So Clover, then Codenames, I think, I think. And I'm only giving Codenames the win because of how long it's lasted. So Clover's still, like, I guess it's lasted for a while. We're talking about 2022 over here. But it's, uh, it's a good game. I think So Clover's fantastic, and I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a very solid party game. And the last we have Tenpenny Parks. Tenpenny Parks I held on to for a year, maybe a year and a half. It's not a game that lasted for me because, ultimately, while I enjoy Tenpenny Parks from Thunder, 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 um, Thunder Wars games, it is another polyomino park lane game honestly the main thing that distinguishes it is the table presence in that one is very solid compared to like some of these other games but i i also have a uh, baron park which i think is great there's world wonders which i got rid of there's um there's uh, that grand carnival there's a lot of these games that fall into that almost well world wonders is a little different but i, I think baron park grand carnival and time honey parks all have a very similar you know theme parky polyomino lane theme and i think that to me ten penny parks while it was good didn't differentiate it itself enough from other games to be like, this is the one I need to have. Baron Park kills it in simplicity. Uh, Grand Carnival has a little more intricate things going on in it. And Tenpenny Parks looked the best, which is sometimes good enough. But in this case, the other ones still look good and they're better gameplay. And so unfortunately, Tenpenny Parks, Tenpenny Parks does look the best. It is the best looking one from the three. So fantastic game, good game, just ultimately for me, competition one in this case. And that brings us to 2023. In 2023, there's a few games. First of all, there's Sentinel's Multiverse Enhanced Edition. I played this one at PAX East for the first time with the creator of Sentinel's Multiverse, which was a cool moment for me because, fun fact for you, one of the first games I ever purchased as I sunk into this hobby, one of the very first games, I think it was like, meaning I think I, I found um, Stone Age, I found Small World, and then I was like, let's go buy some games that's what happened that was my my process so to speak and when i found um when i went and got, I bought a bunch of games i bought from cool stuff inc back at the time back in the day and then i made a, an order on ebay at the same time so i bought from cool stuff inc and ebay as my first purchase into the world of board games and in that ebay purchase i don't remember everything but i remember i got jambo and i remember i got sentinels on the multiverse I don't remember if I got anything else, but I remember I got those two. I got the flat pack square box of the multiverse way back in the old school, so I've been playing Sentinels for a long time. Then I got the Definitive Edition or Enhanced. Which one's this one? Is this Definitive? This is the Definitive. Then I got the Enhanced Edition, played that, and then I got the Definitive Edition, which I still have. I, I like Sentinel Multiverse. It's not a game I table all the time, but it is a satisfying game when I table it, and I think the Definitive Edition is well done, so... um. I'm here for it. It's been, I mean, I know a lot of people who went all in on everything and then they were frustrated when it relaunched, which makes sense to me. But ultimately, I didn't go all in on Enhanced. I kind of, I kind of dabbled with it a bit, but I never really went all in on it. And I like the Definitive Edition right now, so I'm very happy with it. Although I understand that people are frustrated reasonably so. Not everyone. Some people are frustrated. Then we have Kites. I played Kites. Uh, I enjoyed Kites. I thought it was a fun game. For me, Fireworks Enhanced, uh, not Fireworks. I always forget the name. There's an other one that's like not Sparkworks. Is it Sparkworks? I can't remember. I always forget what it's called, but there's the follow up to Kites that I think does it better. So for me, Kites is a game that I've enjoyed, but ultimately is not one that I feel the need to own. And the follow up, whatever it's called, it's on my shelf up there. I, I, I can't um, remember the name of it, but I think it's better. Uh, then we have Pagan Fate of Roanoke. That's a tough one for me. That's a very hard for me. It's a game that I really enjoy. Capstone Games actually picked it up. Dice Tower gave it very solid ratings. I think I, I, I covered that one during the prototype. I really enjoyed it. I played it a few times after I got the final copy. I still really enjoyed it. I found it's not the easiest game to teach or table. But when I do so, it's very rewarding. But also, it's long. So, like, it's it's just a game that, for me, isn't likely to hit the table as much. But I think it's a fantastic game. It's Some games hurt me when I get rid of them. Some games do. And Pagan was one of them. Great artwork. Great setting. Very unique gameplay. Very solid. Just ultimately, for me, it wasn't going to hit the table as often as I'd like. And I'd rather pick other games. And then we have Austin 2023. I played Mr. Jack again. I dove back into Mr. Jack, actually. Fun fact. This is not the first time. Usually, I try to pick the games I played for the first time that month. Uh, but in the case of Mr. Jack... 
didn't play it for the first time, but I did play Mr. Jack in 2023, I guess, March 2023. Uh, I was playing it a bit to like see how it holds up against the Phantom of the Opera, so I got a bunch of games on Board Game Arena, and as much as I enjoy it, and I'm happy that it's on Board Game Arena so I can play it there, I do think the Phantom of the Opera is the better experience for me. It kind of cemented that I still prefer this one for that. And then lastly, we have Legacy of You, which is a game that I really loved when I first played it, and then I kept playing it, and I liked it less and less with each play. To me, Legacy of You is a very good system that would have been better almost as a single shot experience for me personally, not for everyone. A lot of people love it, and they're very happy with it, and I'm glad for that, but for me, Legacy of You let me down as a campaign experience. It kind of felt like the game ping-ponged you back and forth as far as as opposed to you feeling like you're really winning or losing based on your own accomplishments. Yes, good gameplay matters, but it still felt like you were being guided and pulled by the game. Hey, you won, you're getting better, boom, smack you down. Oh, you lost, you're getting worse, boom, lift you up. Like, it didn't feel like the direction of the campaign was driven by me so much as the game shoving you whichever direction you were doing against, and I didn't love that aspect. And then that plus the repetitive play. So as much as I like Legacy of You, and I do recommend it to an extent, I also recommend it with caveats. I recommend checking out other reviewers and seeing how they feel if you're trying to get a sense of whether my opinion is unique to me or generally held. And I've seen, by the way, I've seen both. I've seen people who have my opinion, and I've seen people who are like, no, I love the whole campaign and experience. So that's for that. But ultimately, for me, it did end up leaving. And that's what we have. We have a whole bunch of games throughout the last five years of marches, and uh, some of them are still here. Some of them aren't. That's usually how this video works. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this, and as always, I hope you have a good one.